Okay, so we're all fantasy readers here, right? Many of us have experienced that growing weariness that comes from waiting years or even decades for your beloved fantasy series to reach its conclusion. Not trying to name any names here, but there's some authors that take a long time to finish their series and sometimes they don't even end up finishing it. And maybe you're a reader who's invested a lot into that series. It means something to you. You've read and reread it multiple times. Having no conclusion is the biggest tragedy. You feel like you've been burned and you don't want to be burned again. But for those out there that are craving that satisfaction of a completed story, I have news for you. There's actually a lot of completed fantasy series out there that are worth your time. And I'm going to be recommending 15 of my favorite completed fantasy series. So you can take these recommendations, lock yourself in your house and binge read them to completion and have that satisfying ending, but then you're gonna cry because it's all over and you need more recommendations. I will give you more recommendations, that's my job. But before I dive into my recommendations, real quick. This video is sponsored by Redbubble. If you don't know, Redbubble gives independent artists a way to sell their creations on a variety of everyday products. and there is so many good products and designs on Redbubble, there's really something for everyone. And today, I picked out a bunch of really cool designs for their back to school campaign. Because now is a great time to get some back to school essentials for all your campus needs. Now, first of all, if you're going back to school, whether you're in grade school or college, you're going to want to be fashionable. You want to keep up with the trends. Now, Stranger Things is one of my favorite TV shows, and I picked out a bunch of Stranger Things shirts, including this one here, and I really love these other two as well. They're some of my favorites. I'm also a fan of Dune, and I picked out some Dune t-shirts because I can't wait for the second movie. And hey, you're going to want to decorate your dorm with some household items, and me and Katie picked out some things for the house. Uh, first of all, we picked out this jungle-themed comforter, which I guess I'll take out of here to show you. Our whole house kind of has this jungle theme going for it, so this is perfect. I'm really impressed with like the quality of the print. I love it. And we also picked out these pillowcases for our sofa. And like I said, there's so many amazing designs on Redbubble, and you can put them on a ton of different products. So make sure to visit Redbubble using my link in the description. And you can use my unique promo code RBC-BTS23 dash captured in words to get 15% off your entire order. And a big thank you to Redbubble for sponsoring the video. And back to the video. Now I am going to jump right into the recommendations, but there is so many amazing fantasy series out there that I just haven't gotten around to reading yet. So I want you to do something for me. I want you to recommend some of your favorite completed fantasy series in the comments because I will check them out. And hopefully you'll see some of those in an updated video next year. And to start off is going to be a classic fantasy series that has over like 200 books. The Dragonlance books by uh, Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman. I grew up reading Dragonlance. I think these are just such cozy, fun reads. They're so fast to read, um, but you don't need to read all of them. That would be a huge mammoth task. Really, you just need to stick to like the Chronicles and the Legends books. That's kind of it. You can read more if you want, but those are the essentials. I mean, Dragonlance is worth it for Raistalin alone. He's one of the, the first fantasy badass characters that I came across and really enjoyed. Uh, but there's there's also Tasselhoff and Fizban as well. There's some really memorable characters in Dragonlance. And unfortunately, not a lot of people talk about these books anymore. I still think they're worth your time. They do have a lot of familiar uh, fantasy tropes, but they're just, they're like comfort food. And next up, we have the Winnowing Flame Trilogy by Jen Williams. This is a series that you guys have recommended to me so many times, and I finally decided to start reading it. I, I haven't finished book three yet, but I'm going to recommend it anyway, because there is so much I love about this trilogy already. I can tell it's probably going to be one of my new favorites. The world building is top notch. It is so strange and mysterious, and we slowly uncover these, these details about the Aboran race, and it's just so fascinating. I, I really enjoy it. I love when fantasy authors blend in some sci-fi and some mystery into their fantasy, and this perfectly blends those all together. And while the world building is what originally hooked me with this series, the characters are so fascinating and just relatable. The three main characters in particular, they're all complex, they have flaws, and I just found them so enjoyable to read. I really enjoyed Vintage and her like lust for adventure. I thought she was such a fun character. 
Tourmaline was one of my favorite characters, and Fel Noon was just heartbreaking. I, ah, there's so much. There's so many great characters in this book, uh, and there's just so much that I enjoyed, and I think you should go read it. I would really love to see some sort of illustrated edition with, like, some of Vintage's sketches in the book. Please tell me that's gonna happen at some point. I would buy it 100%. Next up is the Codex Alera books by Jim Butcher. Now, obviously, Jim Butcher is very well known for his Dresden Files books. Uh, however, I don't understand why Codex Alera isn't more popular. This is a six book epic fantasy and it is so good. The world of Alera is so mystical and mysterious. It takes place in this world where um, people can harness the powers of these elemental spirits known as Furies. And the entire story was basically sparked by Jim Butcher making a bet on mixing the Roman Legion with Pokemon and making a book out of that. And that's what Codex Alera is. And it is, it's so interesting. Now, uh, the first book, The Fury... What's it called? What is it called? I got it over right over here. The Furies of Calderon. How could I forget? Uh, the first book, I would say, isn't the best. It, it's a little bit of a slower start, but then this series just gets better and better. I would say these books are heroic fantasy at its finest. I really enjoyed the characters here. Tavi is a fantastic character. There's a lot of great political intrigue as well, and I really enjoyed the sort of elemental magic system. I think it was done really well. Anyways, if you haven't checked it out yet, the Codex Alera books, the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin was such an unexpected gem for me. It is a wonderful take on the genre. Really, it feels like something completely fresh in fantasy. It gets bonus points for the second person point of view that I initially found to be very jarring, but then ultimately, I really liked it and more bonus points for a non-standard fantasy protagonist. I really love how these books explored motherhood amidst generational trauma. It's probably the only fantasy that I've seen explore motherhood this well. If you don't know, the story takes place on a planet with a supercontinent called the Stillness, and every few centuries, its inhabitants endure what they call a fifth season of catastrophic climate change. The book follows the life of Asun, a woman who comes home to find that her husband has brutally murdered their son and kidnapped their daughter. Now, Asun is a person with the ability to control the earth and its movements which is such a cool magic system. Also, I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right. Anyway, we're following her journey to find her daughter and survive the impending fifth season. The themes of oppression and casual cruelty in this world can get very heavy, but it is an incredible trilogy that you should read. Next up, we have one of the best grimdark series out there, The Black Company by Glenn Cook. This series is comprised of 11 different novels and 5 short stories. The series follows an elite mercenary unit, The Black Company, through roughly 40 years of its approximately 400 year history. Now, one aspect that I really enjoyed that you don't see that often in fantasy is just the way that the story is told. Most of the story is written in journal entries uh, by the company's physician. We do get other perspectives as the story moves along, but I just found this such an interesting way to read this story. It feels like you're reading some historical journal entries during wartime. And these books are gritty and realistic, and they perfectly portray war and just the horrors of war. I have not seen a series uh, do so well at capturing that. Next, we have the Ryuria Revelations by Michael J. Sullivan, starting off with Theft of Swords. These books deserve all the praise they get and so much more. Really, they're not talked about enough. Uh, this is a series that I found so satisfying. Like, there's so many twists and turns. I was surprised so often. I think it's going one way and then it completely changes directions and surprises me. Ultimately, the entire story revolves around a pair of thieves, Hadrian and Royce. They're both extremely different and a lot of fun. Royce is this cold-blooded killer and the real thief of the group. And Hadrian is basically the good-natured muscle of the two. And they're basically legendary thieves. They're known to complete their missions with ghost-like efficiency. And right at the start of the book, you can tell they've been working together for quite 
quite some time. But while the two of them enter the series with fully formed skills, uh, we get to see them evolve as characters and grow. Uh, and these two are so much fun. If you love some good banter, if you like a bromance in fantasy, this is one of the best. One of my absolute favorite things in fantasy is just when you have characters that have such a strong friendship and that just work really well together, the back and forth between them, um, it, it's super entertaining. I think this was such a fun book and Hadrian and Royce are two of my favorite characters in fantasy and they're definitely the highlight of the entire series. I would highly recommend checking out the Ryeria Revelations if you haven't. The Powder Mage Trilogy. This is a military style fantasy by Brian McClellan, who is actually a student of Brandon Sanderson, and his writing style kind of reminds me of Sanderson in some ways. Now, similar to Mistborn, Powder Mage is set in a society in the midst of an upheaval against a monarchy that seems to have divine backing. A lot of the plot focuses on trying to rebuild society after this major revolution. Now, picture a fantasy version of a post-French revolution society, and that's what the Powder Mage trilogy is. It's a flintlock fantasy with a really cool magic system revolving around gunpowder. Basically, it's got wizards that snort gunpowder to fuel their magical powers. They're pretty solid reads and definitely worth checking out. C.S. Lewis's timeless creation, The Chronicles of Narnia. This series is very nostalgic to me. I read the books as a child, and I still love them now as an adult, and they absolutely hold up. Some people don't bother with them and just assume it's all Christian allegory and nothing else, and they are missing out. Whether Christian or not, there's so much to enjoy with The Chronicles of Narnia. The books are still wonderfully inventive, witty, moving, and just strange. Voyage of the Dawn Treader, I would say, is probably my favorite. Now, following the world of Narnia from its birth to its end in seven books was one of my favorite literary experiences. It offers a complete and fulfilling experience, and these books really shouldn't be overlooked. The Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb is a 16-book series comprised of five different sub-series. The Farseer Trilogy, The Liveship Traders, The Tawny Man, The Rainwild Chronicles, and The Fitz and the Fool Trilogy. And they should be read in that order. Now, I've only read the Farseer Trilogy, and I'm now on The Liveship Traders, so I haven't read it all, obviously, but I deeply care for the characters in the Farseer Trilogy, and I know I'm going to be reading all all the way to the end. If you want a long series with a lot of strong hitting emotional moments and characters that you will see grow over the course of the books, then you need to read Realm of the Elderlings. I really enjoy how deep into the characters' minds we get in the Farseer trilogy. Even though this is epic fantasy, it feels much more personal. Now, this series is known for its well-developed characters, emotional and at times gut-wrenching plots, and its exploration of complex themes. I will say though, judging just from the Farseer books, this series is a slow burn, and it takes time to fully appreciate the depth and complexity of the story. It's not going to be for everyone, but I really love it, I can't wait to read more, and you can just read a trilogy at a time. You can take your time with it, and the great thing is, is that it's a completed series, so you don't have to wait around, especially after the last book just ended on some tragic event. Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn by Tad Williams. There's a reason why so many authors, including George R.R. R. Martin, have stated that this series is a major inspiration for them. The trilogy was a huge turning point in the genre, firmly rooted in the quest fantasy of The Lord of the Rings, but breaking new ground by adding a lot of political turmoil. The first 250 pages of The Dragonbone Chair are often noted as being extremely slow, and I almost gave up, but it's definitely worth pushing through because the series just gets so good. I think anybody who has an interest in classic, epic, hero's journey type of fantasy should definitely give them a chance. You probably know I am a big fan of the Mistborn books by Brandon Sanderson. The original trilogy is one of my favorite trilogies of all time, but I can also include on this list the Second Era Mistborn, the Wax and Wayne series, because with the release of The Lost Metal, the Wax and Wayne books are now complete. There is going to be a third uh, Mistborn series in the future, but we have the original trilogy, we have Wax and Wayne. They both have satisfying conclusions and they deserve a spot on this list. Mistborn, I think, is just such an incredible series. It still has one of my favorite magic systems of all time. 
and often I still find myself thinking about the characters. The incredible whimsical satire series comprised of 41 books, I'm talking about Discworld by Terry Pratchett. Now it can be very intimidating to start this series, there's so many books. However, I am going to make an ultimate guide to Discworld soon where I talk about the best places to start, so keep an eye out for that video. Uh, but I am happy to say that there's no cliffhangers in Discwor Discworld. Um, most books act as a standalone adventure. You can basically start anywhere. And if you haven't read any Discworld novel before, I think you at least need to give one a try at some point in your life, because I feel like there is a Discworld novel for everyone. These books are incredibly diverse. They cover so many topics and themes that you can relate to in real life. There's a lot of political commentary mixed in and just some really great comedy and humor, uh, but they're just such fun adventures. These are the books that I like to read in between reading other big fantasy series. If you need a break from reading some really tough reads like Malazan or The Wheel of Time or some big epic fantasy sagas, then the best thing to do is to take a break and read a Discworld book. You won't regret it. Some of my favorites include Guards Guards, Mort, and Small Gods. Really, you can just pick one that you like the synopsis of. There's no wrong answer. The Lord of the Rings obviously should be honored on a list like this. Now yes, it was originally written as one book, and then the publishers split it into three. But this is my list, I'm still gonna count it as a series. I've seen a lot of people say that The Lord of the Rings doesn't hold up, and it's just not enjoyable to read anymore, and honestly, I, I can't relate to that. I just never really tire of these books. It does have its slow moments, and Tolkien takes his time describing nature, there's lots of songs and poems that are easy to skip over, but they contain a lot of great world building. You can't deny they're a masterpiece, especially when it comes to the depth of Middle Earth. There's very few modern fantasy authors who can come close to what Tolkien achieved. Sure, depending on your preferences, there's more enjoyable reads out there that are better paced, they might have better action scenes and magic systems or whatever, but Tolkien's work truly does stand the test of time. I think it still holds up very well, and I love to go back to it every now and then. If you have never read The Lord of the Rings, I don't know what you're doing. You should go read it. The Wheel of Time is probably the one series I've gotten the most enjoyment from while simultaneously have been the most annoyed with, and it's amazing. Yes, it has its flaws for sure, but as much as I love The Lord of the Rings, I enjoy The Wheel of Time just a little bit more. There, I said it. I just love how complex the world of the Wheel of Time is. It has so many different nations, cultures, and peoples, and they each have their own unique customs and traditions. And then the characters, they undergo this significant growth throughout the series. And watching them go from these young, naive villagers who get on each other's nerves and to what they become later on is just incredible. Not to mention, there's a lot of truly unforgettable moments in this series. It is a pretty big undertaking if you're not into these long, epic fantasy series, but I would recommend just taking your time with it and enjoying the journey. It's a series with plenty of flaws, but a lot to love as well. Now yes, I am going to put Malazan Book of the Fallen on this list, even though I'm not that far into it, I just kind of started my Malazan journey, uh, but I can already tell this is one of the best finished fantasy series ever. I really wish I read this sooner, actually. Um, it is very complex, it's super intricate, there's so many different side stories going on, and like a rich history and lore to this world, uh, but it's not as complex as people make it out to be. Once you get familiar familiar with the characters and the world building, uh, you, can, you can follow along pretty well. So you shouldn't let anything stop you from giving this series a try. However, if you are struggling getting into Malazan, there is a guide that some fans made that I'd recommend checking out. I can already tell the Malazan Book of the Fallen series is a monumental achievement in fantasy. It has such an immersive and fully realized world. I can't wait to explore more and just dive further on into Malazan because it takes a while to sort of figure out uh, 
about every everything that's going on. I would kind of say this is like a modern day Greek epic. There's a bunch of humans that are caught in the middle of like gods and these larger than life figures and sometimes they outsmart them, sometimes they don't. Next up we have a series by one of my auto buy authors. This author has never really disappointed me. Joe Abercrombie and his First Law books. Now the First Law trilogy, uh, then the spin-off standalone novels, and then he also has the Age of Madness, which all takes place in the same universe. These, this, this is a complete series. You need to go read it. It is one of my favorites of all time. There's very few authors that can actually make me laugh out loud while I'm reading, and Joe Abercrombie is one of those, along with Terry Pratchett. I love that Abercrombie doesn't just write this bleak and depressing grimdark, he adds humor to his books as well, and the, the way that he deals with character voice and how you can tell which character is on the page before you see their name is fantastic. I mean, all the characters have such a strong voice to them. Uh, the narration by Stephen Pacey, I always recommend the audiobooks because Stephen Pacey does such an amazing job at capturing these characters. It actually elevates the entire experience for me. But these characters, man, they are just so multi-dimensional and complex and just so you hate them, and you love them at the same time. I know everyone praises Joe Abercrombie for his character work, but it's true. He's got some of the best characters I've ever read, but he's also really amazing at writing action scenes. It feels cinematic whenever there's a battle and you get different perspectives of people during the battle. The ending to the First Law trilogy blew my mind. I still feel like Abercrombie has a lot that he can, th that he can pull from the First Law universe. I feel like there's more that can be told and I'm hoping there's gonna be more books but as of yet this is a complete series we have the trilogy the standalones and the age of madness trilogy and those are my top 15 completed fantasy series as of 2023 now I would say these are some of the best of the best however I know that there are some amazing series out there that I just haven't read yet so make sure to leave me all your recommendations in the comments like I said I do want to make some updated videos uh, hopefully every year and I would love to find some more incredible series. Now, I am going to have some affiliate links in the description uh, if any of these books caught your interest. Anyways, if you want to join a fantastic community of fantasy lovers, make sure to check out my Discord server. Also, if you like the videos that I make and you want to support the channel, then there's always my Patreon. That helps out so, so much. I appreciate all the support over on Patreon. It really helps me be able to make these videos full time. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys next time.